What is going on guys? It is Ross here and I want to first of all apologize for the last Korean bronze spectates video we did because honestly the audio was just completely unacceptable There was there was no way it, there was no really acceptable reason for me to put that out uh, I put it out because I thought it was a really fun game and a really good game And I didn't want to fake my reaction by going back and like reacting to everything like unjustly I thought it would be weird. I didn't think it would be genuine, but we've got another one for you today to make up for it Okay, we got another bronze spectating in Korea. We're in Korea. We have all the Korean boys here all their names are still messed up. If you guys have any idea how to make these names actually show up, because the only name that seems to be showing up is Tevin Campbell. And that is the guy, if you've ever watched a Goofy movie, you know that you know that character Powerline? That they have to go to, like, the concert? He's the guy that did the songs for that. That's a little bit of facts, a little bit of trivia that I know about that name. <laughs> That's very fucking strange. But we're back in Korea. We're back when he invades. It looks like they're invading, at least, although... Um, I don't know if they kind of have this shit scouted out. Okay, they've definitely been caught. Ramos is going in for the power ball. He may pick up the the uh, the Jarvan. He's flashed. What? Okay, the flash, the Thunder Lords proc. Good job, great invade. Nobody wanted to follow up on that one though. Tevin Campbell is sitting in the bush. He's waiting to try and maybe has he got charm first? He's picked up nothing first, so he was maybe waiting to like pick up the charm. In case somebody decided to walk in that bush. Doesn't look like anything's going to happen though. They're definitely going to potentially steal red buff. No, they're all pussies. They're running away. Okay. Oh no, never mind. This man is no pussy. Ari has not leveled up anything yet either. They still don't leveled anything up. The Ezreal Flash has gone down. She's leveled up Q now. Doing a little bit of damage. Not crazy amount. See, Flash. The Ignite's going down. The Flash is coming down from Ari as well. She's taking so much goddamn damage, man. Holy crap. Oh my god. The Heimerdinger almost kills the Ari. They almost traded kills here. Oh, the hold on a second. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. Oh my god, dude. The flag almost kills the fucking... Oh, flash. There's so many flashes going down, guys. Can we just chill the fuck out for like two minutes? We're literally, we're literally one and a half minutes into the game. And we already have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We have nine summoner spells burst in the space of a minute. Can we stop for like five seconds and we recalibrate? But anyway guys, you're probably wondering why we're uh, having a look at this game. There's a little bit of a backstory behind this I want to tell you guys. Just as like all the people who are starting their clears, there is uh, one suspicious character in this game and that's this Ezreal player, okay? This this Ezreal player, for the last like 10 to 20 games, has a 100% win rate. Now you might wonder, maybe he's just kind of good. Maybe, he's, maybe he just doesn't deserve to, have, to be bronze. Well, he was like bronze last season or silver last season. So I wager he probably does deserve to be bronze. Okay. And that turns out to be first blood as well because Ramus is a fucking insane person. Okay. Wait, hold on a minute. It's Ramus support. That explains why he is an insane person. Because he's fucking playing Ramus support and we have Twisted Fate as an AD carry. I, I said this last time as well. The Koreans, man. They're notorious for their innovation in the League of Legends scene, you know. They have the this this the this, 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 this double lane swapping, the lane swaps where two go top instead of one, and you have the top lane bottom against the, the and just see who can push down towers faster. They have a lot of innovation. Twisted fate to carry with uh with a fucking Ramus support. A little bit too innovative. A little bit look, there's such a thing as too much innovation, surely. But anyway, as I was saying, this guy, he has got hundred percent win rate on every character he's been playing. Now, he used to play, like, I guess a lot of support. I looked at his games. I went through his games. I went back a long, long time. I think this might be a booster. I'm I, I'm quite sure this might be a booster because this guy, he was uh, he was one of the people I looked at when I was trying to find a game. And we played, we watched that Bronze 5 game last time. He was one of the people that we looked at. He was really quite in the depths of Bronze. He was at least Bronze 4, Bronze 3. Now he is... As I record this, he just got into Silver 5, so this is this is technically a spectating Silver game. I mean, there's still bronze people in it, but this guy is now Silver. But this is the, this is the game that got him Silver, I think, or one of his promo games. But yeah, his scores are ridiculous, and to accompany that, to show that I'm not bullshitting here, I'll be showing some screenshots on the screen up to my, uh, I think, what direction will it be? Up here? Up there, where you can see some of the kind of, uh, some of the, the scores he's been getting. This is bronze we're talking about as well. Now we have Sejuani and Ramis going in really hard. They're going to be able to pick up the kill onto that Heimerdinger as well. Alright, so top lane, we have Quinn versus Teemo. That doesn't look like it would be a very good 
or fun lane for Quinn. But honestly, as I've said numerous times in this series, it's bronze. What are you gonna, are you gonna do? What are you gonna do, man? What are you gonna do? Teemo doesn't even try. He doesn't even try to give you shit, man. We have a kill mid lane as well. Tevin Campbell has fallen to the enemy forces, probably because he has absolutely no summoner spells, like whatsoever. Like he is like in the negative with summoner spells here. The event horizon doesn't even land, but he does manage to draw him into the Jarvan, who can get that combo down. Whack him, smack him, bag him, and tag him. That's him, he's done, he's out of here. Big R is a dangerous, dangerous creature, man. You let him even get like a little fucking inch, he, that little short little shit is gonna take a mile. They need to be a little bit more careful of that. They do not want to, uh, I, I know that when I play uh, Ari against uh, Big R, cause I, level seven Ari player here, right here, that's right. Uh, I'm, uh, Big R is one of these matchups that I'm always really, really scared of. Purely because you can just press one button and just go. So, you gotta be a little bit careful of that one. I kinda fucked up my fingers here. But yeah, I say, I know I know we're gonna take a little break here. There's not a whole lot happening in the moment, but I wanna just talk to you guys, just see. If you are enjoying the, the Spectating Bronze series, feel free to drop that shit a like, uh, as always. I know, Mr. Desperate for likes, Ross's channel's dying. Well, you, you can you can save the channel with one quick press of a button. Right, we got some guys coming in top lane. That's a flash coming down from Quinn. She flashes and heals. She's not gonna have any trouble there. She's gonna be getting away. Pretty nicely. Mid lane though. Mid lane though. Jarvan's got his sight set. We have once again Ari with absolutely no mana. The oh, he, oh wait, no, hold on. Yeah, the combo's gonna come down. She lands on the event horizon as well. He doesn't have enough mana for the ult. I thought he was gonna be able to do that. I was expecting the primordial burst all over Ari there. But uh, unfortunately, Jarvan had to pop the flash to be able to get close enough to do the to do that last hit there. Still though, a kill is a kill, so top lane though, these guys are duking it out man, and they are both incredibly low, like this could go either way at this point. We have Jarvan coming in here to try and help the team out, although he does manage to avoid getting knocked up with the uh, the combo, and what what is Jarvan, he's trying to leave the kill. Jarvan just tried to leave the kill for Quinn and got killed, just take the kill man. I'm sure your, your top laner would appreciate being alive more than uh... More than like getting the kill, you know? More than you take the kill. Right, bot lane though. I want to I wanna pay a little bit more attention to bot lane. This is where uh, our, our, our Ezreal, the accused, is, uh, is in bot lane. This is the person that we suspect to be in a booster based on their match history. And uh, I mean, I guess they might not be a booster. If they're against lanes like this, where they have a fucking Twisted Fate AD carry and a fucking Ramus support, you know what? It might not, they might not be a booster. That being said, they are against like Heimerdinger fucking support, who is the squishiest thing that has ever happened to League of Legends. Like, even squishier than like a level 1 Sona or like a level 1 Anivia. Like, that is, that's how squishy we're talking here. We have people duking out as well. Ari, does she have a rally up? She does have Spirit Rush. She is gonna chill out though. She has got enough mana to use it, but it's probably not worth using. Meanwhile, the heal comes down from Twisted Fate. He's gonna possibly try and drop a gold card on Ezreal. I think he's just gonna chill out. There was a lot of people messing around there. A lot of people getting quite low, like a little bit too low, both in the mana and in the HP department. Ramus is fucking relentless though, man. He's powerballing. He's got determination. I don't know if he's gonna go for it though. He's definitely not, man. He's gonna chill out. He's gonna back. He's got the, uh, is he going for a Glacial? Or is he going for a Warden's Mail first? I'm not really sure. I'm not quite sure what uh, what our man Twisted Fate's doing either. I guess we have seen in previous in previous Bronze Spectates, we have seen Twisted Fate AD carry actually do really really well. Like we saw one uh, we we saw one Bronze Spectates where he actually carried the shit out of the game. So I mean, who knows, dude? Who actually fucking knows? Uh, we have a mess of stuff happening on top lane. Spirit Rush has gone down to Joanne. He's trying to come in onto that jar. But however, Ramus looks like he's up for finishing the job. The Destiny comes down for Twisted Fate as well. He's actually going bot lane to try and get onto the Heimerdinger. There isn't a whole lot else happening in the top lane though. There was one pick onto the Jarvan. And then Ari's been Ari's got about 100 HP. Twisted Fate's actually really well trying to fight this bot lane. Ramus needs to get his ass back there and there, help his boy out. Otherwise, these guys are gonna concede the tower. Twisted Fate is just chilling back. He needs to be actually a lot more careful than he's currently being. The ult comes down from Heimerdinger, pops quite a lot of damage down onto the Twisted Fate with the ult A into the E. But it does look like, yeah, Twisted Fate's gonna fall. Oh, he still gets to pick though. Still gets to pick on Heimerdinger, man. Ezreal didn't look like he was like, interested in tanking that in any way, shape or form, despite being pretty much full fucking HP. But they're gonna get a tower out of it regardless, so that's gonna be the first tower going to Boy's side. Not too bad, not too bad. 10 minute tower. 
It's not looking too great for uh, Ramus and Twisted Fate though. Ramus is still chilling top though. He doesn't appear to be given a single solitary shit. But Timo's decked out. I think he might be covering lane for Timo actually. Is he covering the lane? Is that what this says? He better not die this Quinn though. He better not die. It seems to be like so much stuff happening in top lane. I don't know why they're going top lane so hard. The combo misses. Timo gets a nice flash over that combo. Cataclysm under the tower. It's going to end up being in favor of Timo though because she has got a, a fucking nasty ass Jarvan trapped under the tower. Quinn flashing out there but then trying to E back onto the Ramus. Ramus really, really low there. Vega's going to try and come in and maybe try and pick up a kill here. Event Horizon drops. Doesn't land on anybody. He can just press R. Primordial burst. That's a dead ass Ramus. Right now, if he oh, if he plays his card right, he's gonna get a shit of damage. That is a nice that oh that ulti man. I don't think they're gonna pick up the kill on a Timo. No, <laughs> that wasn't a bronze ulti. That was, that was, that was just an I can be your hero, baby. Lord. I can be your hero, baby. I can kiss away the pain. That's some beautiful singing. Garcia Ross, boom socks. Right, let's get into this. Who else is fighting across the map here? They're gonna get top tower here pretty easily. That's gonna be an equal tower trade there, I guess. I mean, Israel got bot tower like a full two minutes ago, but they've been fighting top lane for the last like two and a half minutes. So I guess it's like pretty equal in terms of like time frames, I guess. We're definitely winding up to see some fucking fights bot lane. Oh my goodness, the Twisted Fate Flash onto the Ezreal as well. Is he going to be able to get out the fucking, the Flash, the Arcane Shift from Ezreal coming out there as well? Actually, no, he didn't Flash, he just Arcane Shifted. They're going to get the double kill onto the mid lane. That's easily going to be another tower as well. Vigar is doing so much damage, man. He's got 79 stacks and it's 12 minutes into the game. I'm not, I'm not quite sure if that's like a good amount of stacks to have for that point, but it seems like it's decent. It seems decent. We got Ken Quinn coming in behind as well. Oh, is she ready to come in onto this uh, onto this Ari? We have a five-man mid. There are only two though. It's two v five. There's potential for something to happen here. It looks like maybe Vagar will try and drop down an event horizon before anybody really decides to go in on anything. Ezreal's kind of one mana. Heimerdinger's kind of one mana as well. So Shivani, like purposely going in on this. She's gonna end up getting knocked up as well. She's gonna get stunned so many times. She's gonna get changed CC'd by the entire blue side. However, Red Side are not allowing this to happen, right? They're going for that counter. They're going in on this. There is a lot of damage to be dealt. Timo's coming in from behind. Ari managing to pick up the kill onto Heimerdinger and onto Vigar, picking up the kill onto Vigar with the uh, the Ignite. That's going to be Ramus picking up another kill. He's got a Thormail first item. He does not care. Destiny comes down from the Twisted Fate. She needs to, he needs to be a little bit careful, though, because he's not doing the amount of damage that he really wants to be doing. However... Quinn does not have flash. They are closing in on the Quinn. She's gonna hit the Rift Herald. <laughs> Rift Herald just beats her down though. Getting the kill onto the Teemo there. That is gonna be a, it was like a free Rift Herald for Red Side as well though. None of them are, yeah, there we go. They weren't positioning themselves behind to hit the eye to get the extra damage. Now they are, now things are good. That's gonna be a Rift Herald going onto Teemo, presumably. Or, okay, okay, Teemo did get it. I saw Jarvan there. And I was a little bit, I was a little bit scared, thinking he may, he may be able to pick something up here. But no, we're good. Oh, okay. That kind of caught me off guard. That was a little bit of damage. This Heimerdinger is doing a lot. Oh, that was a field goal. Oh, we there from Sichuani there. She is gonna have to flash out of that one. She just whiffs the ulti between Vega and between Heimerdinger. They are doing a lot of damage, man. Hammerdinger's doing a lot more damage than I expected. He's kind of going full AP, though. He's going for the uh, the Zonya's Hourglass first item. Ezreal's just going to go full build. Sejuani's trapped herself in the Event Horizon once again with the Ramis. The two of those, the two of them are just like, oh, they are, they're not the smartest guys you, you'll ever see. Sejuani's only actually died twice, but both deaths have been really, really, really silly. And very easily could have been avoided, but I don't know. Alright, we got some pings coming out onto Dragon. But I don't know. I don't know if we're gonna try and take anything here. There's not really any vision on it for either side here, so we could see we could see a good texture just if Red Side happened to walk past it. But Quinn is slowly but surely bringing this thing down. I don't know, the Ari's nearby. Ramus is coming down. They have spotted it that they're going for the dragon. Ramus is walking onto that. That's it, Quinn. Ari's gonna spirit rush towards the edge row, picking up the free kill there. Heimerdinger doesn't seem to give a single solitary shit though. He's just walking through three enemy fucking red team trying to get to the dragon to pick up that fucking free, that free mountain drake. But that's going to be the mountain drake for red side there. Decent tower, decent tower. 
they're gonna have like a lot, a pretty decent amount of uh, push there, with the, especially with like the Ramus ulti. That does quite a lot of damage to towers. You've got Timo split push anyway. That's gonna be good for uh, extra damage to towers. And uh, I don't know, like, Twisted Fate does do good damage to towers, even if he is going attack speed currently. He's got his Runan's Hurricane. But uh, yeah, I mean, he's still gonna do decent damage to towers, especially. It's just gonna be buffed by that Mountain Drake. So yeah, cool, good stuff. In terms of like which team is actually doing better or which team's gonna be winning, even though the red side have like a single kill lead, the goal difference is actually 1.5k in favor of both side. I don't know what it is between like and when bronze games, the goal difference just seems so fucking minimal. Like usually, I'd expect like one team to just snowball really hard or just like shit stomp. Especially when we have a character or person in this game that I suspect might be boosting, although he's not actually doing too great. He's only 2-2, two two, but I uh, I suspect that will pick up a little bit towards late game. I could be wrong though, I could be wrong. He could just be a player that is uh, doing pretty well. He's on a bit of a win streak. If by a bit of a win streak, you mean the last 20 games have been wins, which is a bit more than a fucking win streak. Let me put it that way. But we have pings going out. They're pinging onto the Teemo. The Teemo has been locked on. He's going to try and back, but I don't know if it's going to be enough. They are closing in. I don't think he's going to have enough time here. The Q comes down onto the Vagar. He's going to try and kite him into the, uh, into the mushroom. It's not going to do enough, though. However, that was a, a waste of an ulti from Vagar. He was dead, man. He had four people collapsing on him, and still, he decided to, uh, to ulti. Bit of a strange one. However, mid lane, they managed to pick up the kill onto Heimerdinger. Probably just a free little gold card there. That's going to also mean that the tower mid lane is going to fall. With Mountain Drake, it's going to be a piece of cake. They're not even going to be able to get there in time to respond to that. Ramis, however, is a fucking insane player. Crowley has no, no care for human life. Jarvan's going to go onto the Twisted Fate as well, try and get some Cataclysm down. But it uh, doesn't do enough damage. It's still pretty squishy at this point in the game. Twisted Fate flashing over the wall. He's going to try and get the kill onto Ezreal, but it's going to be an equal trade there. That was a really, really nice Quicksilver Sash there from, Twist from uh, Ezreal. He's clearly picking up the, the early Quicksilver Sash just to deal with the amount of lockdown that Twisted Fate and Aramis can have. Which uh, which to me alone kind of signals that this person has like quite a bit of game knowledge or a bit of game sense to know to... Uh, to go for that Quicksilver Sash to avoid dying a lot, even if it means uh, a lack of damage towards like mid game. That's that that alone makes me a little bit suspicious, you know. But yeah, Jarvan's going full AD. So whilst his Cataclysm and whilst his combo is gonna do a shitload of damage, he is gonna be so goddamn squishy. It's not even fucking funny. So hopefully he's able to do something. But I'm not I'm not like holding my breath for anything other than him getting completely shut down and him completely burst. Especially against like a Ramus team, a team with a Ramus Sigilani. People that can like really shut down his entire combo pretty easily. But uh, we'll see, maybe he will start building. Maybe after this item, he's got the uh, BF Sword, he's got a straight of Dirk. Maybe he'll start building tank afterwards, who knows, who knows. We're definitely gonna see some kind of fight here. Jarvan is going in. Although he's just gonna get taunted. He's just gonna get charmed, he's just gonna get destroyed. This is why you need some tankiness, man. This is why you need some tankiness. Especially against the Ramus, man. You're so easy to shut down, you know? You need to be a little bit more careful. It seems like all the lanes have kind of gone to shit here. People have given up all recourse. They're just throwing themselves anywhere. Bot lane have gone mid. Mid lane have gone bot. It really, it really doesn't even matter at this point, <laughs> apparently. However, Heimerdinger does do quite a bit of damage, but he is pretty low. Wouldn't be surprised to see an all-in going on in bot lane here. He always comes down. From the Sejuani. That's a flash coming out from Heimerdinger. That was a nice Zonyas. I don't think it's going to save him though. She's still got plenty of stacks of her Spirit Rush out. That's going to be a kill. I think we saw a kill elsewhere as well. Uh, there was a kill onto Ramus mid lane. Or was it mid lane? I think it was mid lane. But Ramus has died so many times it's pretty much expected at this point. So nothing special. Nothing crazy. Timo is behind enemy lanes here though. I don't know how Quinn, Quinn st stayed in the bush up top lane up here. A long ass time waiting for Timo. Timo just walked straight past her. Now he's on the tower, flashing into her under that tower, dropping the ignite as well. The ignite was probably entirely unnecessary, but for style points, I give him, I give him ten out of ten for that one. The response though, we might. Oh, okay, yeah, we're definitely gonna see a pickup on Timo there. Didn't even have time to comment it over that. He just went way too fast, man. Way too fast. That's gonna be another dragon going out for red side though. They did manage to uh, distract blue side with that Timo. Just long enough 
to uh, to probably secure that dragon. I'm not going to speak too soon. I'm not going to speak too soon. That's a kill going on to Twisted Feet as well. I don't know though. Cloud Drake isn't really my jam. I don't really like it all that much, so... Oh, the Primordial Burst actually doesn't do a whole lot of damage there at all. And they're 2v3, but I, I wager that uh, Ari's a little bit too scared to go in here because she doesn't really think that neither Ramis nor Sejuani are going to be of any help to her. Ezreal does going to come in. He's going to help pick up the kill onto that Ari. Ari still managing to grab the kill onto the Quinn though with the Ignite. Last tick of Ignite finishing her off there. There's so many pings going out here right now. There's so many pings. They're going to try and pick up this Teemo. Surely. The Destiny has come down. The dark, Oh, the Dark Matter onto the Destiny does so much damage. And Sejuani uses her uh, ulti. Stops both of them, but it doesn't stop Twisted Fate getting absolutely popped. That was horrible, man. That was really nice from uh, from from Vagar, man. Really quick thinking to drop the uh, to drop the the dark matter straight onto the point where he's gonna be. That takes like a lot of thinking, a lot of quick thinking, not a lot of thinking, but a lot of quick thinking. Some, maybe something that I would I would forget to do if I was in a panicky mood. If I was like panicking or something, I probably would forget to do that shit. Okay, we're seeing a lot of people surrounding Baron here. The flash over the wall from Quinn going into the Baron pit there. A little bit questionable. She is gonna oh actually gonna get an. Almost half HP Quinn just from queuing Baron. I wonder if she even realizes how much damage she just inadvertently did there. However, we have got the uh, Cataclysm coming from Jarvan onto the Twisted Fate, who does flash out. Although Jarvan doesn't drop the Cataclysm, it doesn't stop Ezreal from picking up the kill there, though. So Joanne's gonna chase down the Hammerdinger. Ramus is gonna be picking up the Quinn. Meanwhile, Ezreal, uh, sorry, Vagar is gonna pick up the kill onto the Ari. This is a fucking mess up team fight. So is just struggling to try and pick up that Vagar. I don't think she's gonna get away, though. Wolves are doing a lot. Oh, damn, it's gonna pick up that kill. Gonna give Ezreal yet another. That's gonna be a double. I think Ezreal might have picked up more than a double there in that, the course of that fight. Definitely picked up at least three kills. He picked up the Twisted Fate. He picked up the uh, the Ramus and the Sijuani. He didn't mean to pick up the Sijuani, but damn, did he pick that up anyway. Uh, Blue have lost the Terror Bot lane, though. Timo decided to go bot, split push that, and has picked up the bottom first tower. He's going for Runans as well, so he's definitely going for a split pushy build. And I'll be honest, they do have a pretty ridiculous split push build with the Twisted Fate Runans as well. That is going to be the Destiny coming down for Twisted Fate, and he is actually doing a pretty decent amount of damage. I don't think it's going to be enough. That was, that was maybe a little bit too close. That was a little bit too close for a Twisted Fate there, man. I would not fucking risk that if I was him. Whew. For him to go on that, man. He's going for, like, hybrid build. He's going for the Gwinsu's Rage Blade. He's got the Runan's Hurricane. Going for the, the Blade of the Rune King next, I believe. And, uh, yeah, Ezreal did, a, Ezreal did a lot of damage to Retaliate there, even after the stun. I thought he might have QSS up, but I, I assume that he just used the last fight. And then that's why he wouldn't. If he actually had QSS up, he definitely would have survived. He definitely would have picked up that kill. And uh, Twisted Fate would not have been in a good place. But yeah, no, Jarvan. Jarvan, yeah, full AD Jarvan. He is gonna, he's gonna destroy that Teemo. The, the gangbang onto that Teemo is not gonna be fun. Ari's in a bit of a weird position here as well. She's behind enemy lines. She's trying to make it back home. Oh, the end of the event horizon manages to grab her though. And that's gonna be the Cataclysm onto the Ari. Vagar does end up picking up the kill though. Jarvan does not steal it. They're gonna grab the tower as well there whilst they're at it. But I don't think we're gonna see many more kills come out of this. We've got the tower. Mid lane though. Ramus is feeling pretty brave. I don't know, he may just go under terror and ulti. Yeah, he's literally just gonna go under terror and ulti. Is he gonna he's gonna get the kill? He wasn't it wasn't in range at first to get the the uh, the ulti damage off onto the terror, but he manages to move it in. So he picks up the kill onto the Ezreal, who presumably just killed himself off the thorn mail that he has. He's got a spirit's visage a spirit's visage, a thorn mail, and boots his speed. So that's pretty that's pretty Ramus Ramus supporting right there. So he's finally going in 4v1 against Blue Side. Despite the fact that all of them are really, really low. So Zwani, not exactly fucking Katarina. She cannot go in and do stuff like that without feeling the consequences. That's going to be Vagar just dropping the Primordial Burst onto her once more. Picking up that kill. That is a, a 9-5 Vagar who is... You don't want to feed, man. You do not want to feed Vagar. All the characters, man. You don't want to be feeding them. Oh, Quinn just going to kill herself on the Ramus as well. Ramus is getting work done, man. He's 6-8, and eight, which isn't too bad considering it's fucking Ramus support. But it seems to be most of the kills he's getting are kills that people are just 
They're just doing it to themselves. Destiny's come down. They're presumably gonna be able to pick up the kill onto the the, uh, the Heimerdinger. Yeah, I'm sure he had vision on him. I don't know why he like kind of stalled there. Oh my god, that is the second time that Twisted Fate has very nearly died trying to uh, <laughs> trying to fucking get a kill with Destiny. <laughs> I think he needs to be ever so slightly more careful with the. Uh, with that, it's like twice in a row he's managed to get a kill onto somebody that would presume would usually be quite an easy kill. He's survived it with less than 50 health though, so yeah. We got third. Uh, we got. I guess that third Drake. We got third Drake up though. Another cloud Drake. Not really worth risking everything for, but uh, our boys are definitely gonna. They're definitely gonna. Ari's dropping down bot lane. She's getting caught in tri bush. This is gonna be another easy pick up onto the Sejuani. Oh, she actually manages to always she gets the passive from her mastery, or keystone, which is actually gonna keep her alive. Is she gonna go back in though? She stuck around a little bit too long there. To maybe hesitate, thinking about trying to help the Ramus, but Ramus was long dead. That's gonna be the close Drake, first Drake of the game for Blue Side. Alright, so it looks like Blue Side are potentially going straight for the Baron after picking up those those three picks onto uh, onto Cloud Drake as well. They got two picks off that as well, so it's probably gonna be a really, really free Baron for them as well. Guys, this replay keeps on fucking up, right? This is about the ninth time I've had to restart the replay and sit through the entire goddamn thing, right? If you don't like this video, I'm gonna cry. I'm gonna straight up cry tears, all right? So Juani, trying to get over there a little bit too late on that one, having to flash over the wall as well. Meanwhile, Denton picks the Edfuel with the fucking AWP, man. Like, it's Counter-Strike fucking DDoS 2. Getting the kill onto the Teemo Digger as well. So, Baron buff on blue side. Things aren't looking too fantastic for our boys. But honestly, it's a pretty good theme in this game. But well, that's just great, innit? That, that's just fantastic. To be honest, there was only really one more team fight anyway. Um, and it was just a couple kills. And then they, 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 they killed the Nexus. The game ends in less than five minutes from here. I'm really sad. This just this isn't working. This this replay is not is failing on me. But it was a it was a decent game beyond that with some nice boost in action, I believe. But yeah, guys, I'm really sorry about this one. Koreans are hard to get replays for. Apparently, if you're Korean, please send me replays so I can spectate you. But beyond that, guys, I'm really sorry for this weird abrupt ending to the video. Kind of sucks, but uh, the replay system, yeah, it's been improved. But it ain't fucking perfect, unfortunately. Well, I guess I'll see you tomorrow. I've been Ross Bimsocks. Thank you so much for watching. Take it easy. Support the series. Have a good day.